cathedrals being the mother church of the diocese, and in this case, originally it was the mother church for the whole, the whole uh, United States, um, it needs to be in a prominent place. And Washington is not really a city yet. It's just beginning. Um, so, and, and Maryland is a very Catholic state. It was one of the states that was the, uh, the give, gave the most freedom to Roman Catholics, uh, and Baltimore was a Catholic town. And so, yeah, it's in the city, it's prominent, it's on a square. That's the other thing uh, we think of in Southern Catholic countries, piazzas or plazas in maybe more English places. We have a green but some kind of a public space around it for prominent building. You give it space for gathering, for setting it off, so you can see it, um, as Alberti says, as a freestanding temple. It's slightly on a hill in Baltimore. It's above the wharf, above the port. And uh, it's uh, at that time, it would have been able to be seen from a large area of Baltimore. Today, it's surrounded by decent-sized buildings, uh, so it's still prominent, but not so much from afar. It's not something on the skyline. The dome is uh, fairly unusual. It's not the first dome in the U.S., um, but it may be one of the earliest on a church. And what's interesting is Latrobe, who we think of as being a friend of Jefferson, and they, um, they discussed architecture and debated architecture quite a bit, um, also used domes. Um, Latrobe himself uh, promoted domes in a lot of his work, and he was very interested in masonry domes. Um, he was uh, the second or third architect at the U.S. Capitol and proposed a dome, and it wasn't built. He also worked on the uh, White House. Um, but interestingly, according to John Waite, who restored the Baltimore Cathedral, the domes at the U.S. Capitol that Latrobe built leaked. They had uh, glass uh, oculi right at the top. The, the, the opening, the skylight at the top was glass, and they, they got a lot of water in there. So uh, he and Jefferson were talking, and he came up with this other solution here where the ceiling actually has skylights, a series of skylights, and um, there's actually a painting in the middle and the light comes in kind of mysteriously uh, from above. You don't look straight up like in the Pantheon. Today, there are three domes, uh, two little domes, and one big dome over the crossing, over the, the middle of the cross. And then the apse itself is semicircular, so it's a half dome. And again, this is, the, this is the beginning of domical architecture, or not the beginning, but it's one of the important moments of domical architecture, which became so important in the nation's capital, but it really crossed the country. The most recent uh, restoration was about 20 years ago under Cardinal Keeler, Archbishop of, of Baltimore, and uh, John Waite, architect in New York State, a uh, friend of mine, and uh, their goal was actually to return the cathedral to what it was intended to be originally. So you take out the stained glass, you change the colors back, you redo the pews the way they were originally, you rebuild the bishop's throne into a circular canopy, which is really lovely. It looks very colonial, uh, but it's the early throne with fabric coming down. And then you balance that out with the pulpit or the ambo, which is also uh, circular. And so you do all these things. You bring these things back um to the church that had been you know developed and changed over the years some for good reasons some maybe you know maybe their mistakes but anyway that was the goal to bring it back and uh, uh but the ceiling paintings uh those are all new so you have an image of the assumption and uh on the ceiling on these three domes you have uh, uh mainly on the two little domes you have the assumption you have an image of christ on the other, and that's uh, by Evergreen. As Catholics, we need to uh, support the arts and support architects and craftsmen as the bricklayer, the dome builder. We need to support all these uh, great things, and it's great to conserve and reuse because we have great, you know, we have wonderful tradition, but we need to, we need to uh, be patrons of new art, and they did that here in Baltimore.